If you're going on the journey of becoming a filmmaker, you've probably asked yourself the question, should I buy myself a cinema camera? It's a lot of money to invest and there's a lot of questions that you need to cover off yourself to decide whether it's the right decision to move from that DSLR or mirrorless onto using a cinema camera. In this video, I'm gonna go through eight reasons that you should think about before splashing the cash and getting yourself one of those beastly cinema cameras and emptying your pockets. But before I jump into it, for those of you that are new here, my name's Joe Howes, and on this channel, we talk about getting cash whilst getting creative, the business of filmmaking. I teach all that I know in my tips, tricks, and things that I've learned over the last five years of growing a successful video production business, working with internationally recognized brands all over the globe. So if that sounds like it will be interesting or valuable to you, do consider subscribing because I'm dropping content regularly. Okay, let's jump straight into it. So reason number one is a question that you need to ask yourself before investing. And that is, are you predominantly shoot in video. If you're going through the journey of becoming a creator that's trying to make a living out of your camera, you might in your early days do photo and video. But if you're finding that more of your work is video and it's predominantly video, perhaps it's better to have a camera that is explicitly fit for purpose for shooting video. Don't get me wrong, there are loads of great options and video capabilities of mirrorless cameras these days. It's actually a little bit crazy, but a cinema camera is purpose built in so many different ways. So if you need to be shooting video, video content most of the time or all of the time, that's all your work, then maybe a hybrid camera which can take photos isn't the best option for you. But if you are working a bit of a hybrid approach, some photos, some videos, maybe sit tight before investing in a cinema camera. It's an expensive thing and you can get a lot of the jobs done with a mirrorless. But if you've got a consistent flow of work coming in and you can afford to invest in a cinema camera as well as a camera for your photos, then I guarantee you the cinema camera will elevate the quality of your work. And that leads me on to reason number two as to why you should consider buying a cinema camera. And that is because you get an improved video aesthetic because you get improved capabilities and spec. In general, if you're gonna invest in a cinema camera, it's gonna have better video specs than a mirrorless camera. The codex will capture higher data rate, better color profiles, get better dynamic range. The image will be softer and have more of a premium feel to it. You'll be able to shoot at higher frame rates in a better resolution. And in general, the specs are just gonna be way better and specifically better for shooting video. Now, don't get me wrong, there's a lot of mirrorless cameras with great specs, amazing video specs, in fact. It's a little bit crazy how good they are these days. But I always find when shooting on a mirrorless camera, the aesthetic of the look out of the camera has a bit more of a sharp digital feel to it. It's very subtle, but the quality is not the same as shooting on a cinema camera. The cinema camera gives you a nice softer skin tone. The dynamic range between the highlights and the shadows rolls off much nicer. And when you come into creating great video work, those little 1% all add up. I've spoken about 1% in a previous video. And it is the difference between good content and great content is being mindful of all those little 1%. And a cinema camera is gonna give you an elevation in terms of the specs and the image quality. But as mentioned in reason number one, it's very much a balance of can you afford it? If you've got a consistent revenue stream and you can justify paying for it, then it's definitely gonna elevate your work. And that means that you're gonna be able to charge more for the work that you're doing. Gear needs to be observed as an investment, an investment in making better quality so you can charge more for it. Don't just spend money for the sake of it. If you're doing loads of social media content, YouTube content for a client, it's not gonna matter that much if you're using a mirrorless camera. If you're working on TV spec, commercials and short films, then a cinema camera is really gonna help you get that extra premium look. Okay, reason number three is the functionality and ergonomic benefits of a cinema camera versus a mirrorless camera. Cinema cameras are typically much more chunky, a bit bulkier. They have side handles and they have top handles. They also have easy access to all the buttons that you need to quickly adapt your settings on the fly. These ergonomic design benefits are massively, massively, massively important when it comes to filming, especially when you're doing stuff that's run and gun. Having a camera that's a little bit heavier in your hand and gives you faster access to those settings to change makes your workflow much easier when shooting with it. And for me personally, I've used cinema cameras for the last three years now, and I couldn't go back to shooting on a mirrorless as my predominant camera. I really value having the grips and the fast access to the settings that I wanna change. Now, there are some cameras that are sort of hybrids between the mirrorless and the cinema body 
bodies like the Sony FX3 and the Canon C70. Now these are both great cameras. They'll give you an amazing image and the same kind of quality as a lot of cinema cameras out there. But for me personally, the ergonomic design of those isn't as superior as a classic cinema camera body. They still have that mirrorless style and they're also a little bit lighter as well. Now lighter, when you shoot in film, in some occasions isn't better. A little bit of chunk and weight can help you get much better shots when you're shooting. Which leads me nicely on to reason number four, which is the benefit of handheld shooting. That extra bulk and the extra weight means that when you shoot in handheld, you're gonna get much smoother, organic looking shots. The smaller mirrorless camera body is inevitably gonna show shakes much more than something like a cinema camera, which has that extra weight in your hand. And also the top handle and the side handle to help you keep it steady. I personally love shooting handheld. It's something that I've really worked on over the last 24 months in my filmmaking career. And I think it adds so many benefits to bringing the audience closer to the story. And it has a very unique look. You can get your camera in different places, different angles, and having a camera which has got all of the ergonomic factors to make that easier, I enjoy loads. Now I know some people like to pimp out their mirrorless cameras, they'll put rails on it, and they'll put a matte box, and they'll put a monitor on it, and they'll rig it up and make it look like a cinema camera. But I mean, it's not a cinema camera. And if you're gonna spend that much money putting all that rigging on it, is it not worth maybe not buying that gear and just spending those few thousands of pounds that you're gonna spend on getting a camera which is better fit to give you a much better quality image straight away? Maybe instead of pimping it up, just bite the bullet and buy a cinema camera. You might be able to fake a rig, but really everybody can see what the camera at the base of it is. And this leads me on to my next point, reason number five, which is presence on set. It may sound like a vanity thing, having a big fat camera when you're on set with a client. But ultimately, if you're passionate about making films, then in order for you to do that, you need to be making money so you can do this as a full-time career. And the only way that you're gonna make money is being able to charge money to a client. You'd rather be able to charge a thousand quid a day versus a hundred pound a day. If you invest in a cinema camera, the aesthetic of your videos and the quality of your videos is gonna improve, which means your portfolio is gonna improve, which means you'll be able to justify charging more money. But also when you get onto set with a client that you're gonna charge a thousand pound a day, if you turn up with a small mirrorless camera, they're gonna feel a little bit peeved off that they've paid you so much money and you've turned up with just such a small camera. Even if it is a very capable camera, like an FX3, the perception to a client is that this isn't as good a quality as somebody that turns up with a bigger camera. Whether it's right or wrong, that is just the way of the world. This channel is about getting cash and getting creative. And if you're wanting to grow your video business, then you need to know that the fastest way that you can make more money with video content is selling more video to the clients that you're already working with. So every single time that you go on set with a client, especially a new one, your fastest way to make more money is to sell more to them. But every single step in that journey that the client has with you from the first time they interact with you to the email correspondence to how you handle yourself on set are all really important. They're all building confidence that the client can trust you to deliver. And if you turn up on set with a tiny little camera, then the client might have a little knocking confidence that you are gonna be able to deliver. And you don't want any bumps along that journey of a client interaction with you. You want them to feel confident that you're capable and can deliver for them at every single step. So turning up with a camera with a bit more presence and a bit more bulk, even if it's got the same specs as one that's a little bit smaller, is gonna just reinforce that confidence and help you build that client relationship and make more money. It might seem a bit strange to link so many things together, but these things really matter when you're trying to grow a video business. Just to extend on that, it's important to understand that when you're on set, you are essentially selling yourself and your video production company. The nature and benefit of this business is a lot of times one client will put you in front of one of their clients to make a video. And the client of your client that you're in front of is a prospective business that you could do video with. So the better impression you can give to them on set is gonna give you a higher probability of getting new business out of them as well. So not only is it about developing your current client, but every single time that you're on set and present yourself with more presence, it's gonna give you a higher probability of getting new clients as well. Okay, next up, let's talk 
talk about audio. If you're really looking to take filmmaking serious, then you need to understand that the backbone of every single piece of video content is the audio. It's 50% of the experience. Good audio is as important as good visuals. And this is something that I think a lot of rookie filmmakers struggle to grasp at the start. A cinema camera is fit to give you quality audio straight out the gate. Most high quality microphones require an XLR input. And 99% of cinema cameras will enable you to put an XLR straight into the camera and capture audio from a high quality microphone. And most cinema cameras internally have pretty solid internal capabilities and EQ settings. So when you're receiving the audio into the camera, it doesn't really need a massive amount of work in post-production. If you're doing a lot of run and gun work, it actually can save you money by getting a cinema camera with that XLR input to enable you to capture audio. Instead of spending hundreds of pounds on an external recorder, you don't have to worry about that. The audio feed goes directly into the cinema camera and is embedded directly onto the video itself. If you're doing a lot of run and gun work, this can be super handy. I use it all the time. And it can also help you out and save you on occasion. I'll give you an example. A couple of weeks ago, we were shooting with Aston Villa Football Club doing this corner kick challenge. We only had a couple of lav mics available, but all of a sudden they wanted to do more people, so more players and more attendees doing this corner kick challenge than we originally foresaw. The only microphone that I had was on the presenter, but we had three players and three people doing this corner kick challenge. Now I needed to capture audio from them. And I had the NTG3 Rode mic with a dead cat on, on top of the Sony FX6. And you know what? The audio captured on it was great and absolutely usable for the content that we were producing. Having a cinema camera where you can put in a really good microphone, capture audio directly into the video, saved me then, and it will save you on occasions if you invest in a cinema camera. Okay, so reason number seven is having an internal ND. Having this feature inside your camera is great. You essentially have an ND that goes directly over the sensor. You don't need to get different NDs for different size lenses, and you don't have to have them on the end of your camera, hindering you from adding any extra filters that you want to add. It's right there inside the camera, and you can adjust it from the camera body. ND filters are essential for shooting in pretty much most environments apart from the night. Having ones directly in the camera means you can correct your exposure in a pinch without adjusting your shutter or your frame rate. If you're on a mirrorless, you might have been tempted or on occasion cranked your shutter speed right up or dropped your f-stop down to try and compensate for a light. And when you're looking at it through a little monitor or on the back of the camera, it looks all right when you're filming it. But when you get into post-production, you can see it's just not quite right when you blow it up on a screen. Having that internal ND is going to save you time on set. It's going to save you the investment of buying them for each individual lens that you have. And for me personally, I would never go back to using an ND on the end of a lens. For shooting scenarios that are events, run and gun, documentary, or even just doing interviews where you're trying to compensate for windows in the middle of the day, it helps so much just to have it internally and be able to adjust it right there. And then final reason, reason number eight, is the input capabilities of cinema cameras. The cinema camera is purpose-built for video. So all of them tend to have a normal size HDMI where you can plug in any monitor you want. A normal HDMI input and output is always less hassle, I find, but also it can unlock capabilities of your camera which you wouldn't get on a mirrorless. You can get monitors which enable you to export raw video files directly onto them, and you can only do that with a HDMI output. This enables you to really get the most out of the capabilities of your camera. You can record in the highest data resolution and when you're dealing with really working on a color grade, getting the most data that you can of the footage when you're shooting will really help a colorist bring that to life. Have I used the external raw HDMI recording very often? No. But it's good to know that it's there on occasions when you do need it. For a situation like filming a TV commercial, for example. Also, another useful input capability that you get on cinema cameras is time code. So if you're shooting with multiple cameras on a live event, or you're doing something documentary style where you've got external audio being recorded on multiple cameras, having that time code can really help just match everything up and make the edit much easier. Again, it depends on what your shoot scenarios are. For me personally, I very rarely use time code. But again, it's good to know that it's there on the occasions that I need it. This final reason of inputs and capabilities really resides in your camera having the functionality to be able to keep up 
with the opportunities, projects, and challenges that you might have in the future as a filmmaker. Okay, so that's eight reasons why you might wanna consider buying a cinema camera. If you enjoyed this video, I'd appreciate it if you hit the like button, drop a little comment on there. These things really help the algorithm. And if you're interested in cinema cameras or making that investment, I'd check this video out here that I did on the FX6. It's the cinema camera that I own and it's pretty damn good.